Hi everyone, I'm Julia Schubert and in this video I will be presenting my oral presentation that was given at the 2018 Neuroreceptor Mapping Meeting in London, where I presented recent work that showed alterations in cerebrospinal fluid flow in Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis, measured with dynamic PET. Starting with an overview of cerebrospinal fluid production and flow. Cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, is predominantly produced from blood through the choroid plexuses that are present in the lateral, third, and fourth ventricles shown here in red. A smaller amount of CSF is also produced by the ependymal cells that surround the ventricular system. If we trace the path of CSF from the choroid plexuses of the lateral ventricles, it flows to the third and then the fourth ventricles, then flows through three small openings into the subarachnoid space surrounding the brain and spinal cord, as well as through the central canal of the spinal cord, with little backflow to the ventricular system. The CSF is eventually cleared to the venous system through arachnoid granulations and is also cleared through the cervical lymphatics via the cribriform plate. The flow of CSF plays an important role in the recently discovered lymphatic system. This system is responsible for clearance of waste and other solutes from brain tissue and is thought to be analogous to the peripheral lymphatic system with the additional involvement of glial cells. The original explanation of the lymphatic system describes how CSF enters the brain via the spaces that surround penetrating arteries. The CSF then enters the brain parenchyma, where it combines with interstitial fluid and collects waste and other solutes. Interstitial fluid is then cleared to the bloodstream across the postcapillary vasculature, cleared back to the CSF in the subarachnoid space, or to the cervical lymphatics via the spaces around draining veins. Convective bulk interstitial fluid flow drives the clearance of solutes from the tissue, and aquaporin-4 water channels, shown here localized to astrocytic end feet that contribute to the blood-brain barrier, play an important role in the movement of fluids in the lymphatic system. Previous research using phase contrast MRI found significantly decreased flow of CSF in multiple sclerosis patients and has also found associations between decreased CSF flow and conversion rate from clinically isolated syndrome to clinically defined MS. A mouse model of MS has also been shown to exhibit loss of the localization of aquaporin-4 water channels to the paravascular astrocytic end feet. In Alzheimer's disease, transportation of fluorescently tagged amyloid beta via the lymphatic system has been observed. The clearance of soluble amyloid beta is suppressed with deletion of the aquaporin-4 gene and significant accumulation of amyloid beta has been observed after suppression of the lymphatic system. In this study, we aim to determine whether there are differences in ventricular CSF clearance between patient groups and healthy controls, while also gaining a better understanding of where the PET tracer in the CSF of the lateral ventricles is coming from. Ultimately, we wanted to replicate a 2017 study in Alzheimer's disease by De Leon and colleagues that showed decreased ventricular PIB measures in Alzheimer's disease compared to controls, and extend our study to include mild cognitive impairment and multiple sclerosis patients. We used MRI and dynamic PIB PET data from three sets of participants, one group with 20 multiple sclerosis patients and eight matched healthy controls, one group with 12 Alzheimer's and 12 mild cognitive impairment patients with 12 matched healthy controls, and another Alzheimer's group with 11 patients and 11 healthy controls that had blood data collected during the PET acquisition. Cortex was used as a reference region for the multiple sclerosis data set, and cerebellum was used as a reference region for the Alzheimer's data sets. PIB is a neutral dye that is used for imaging amyloid beta plaques in Alzheimer's disease and has been used to quantify in vivo myelin loss and regeneration in multiple sclerosis. For this analysis, we were only interested in PIB clearance from the lateral ventricles. This tracer was also selected for consistency with the previous study by DeLeon and colleagues. We generated manual regions of interest of the lateral ventricles and calculated area under curve and standard uptake value ratios of the lateral ventricles for each subject. The Alzheimer's dataset that included blood data was used for compartmental modeling analysis for further understanding of the kinetics of the signal in the lateral ventricles. We first look here at the area under curve values from 35 to 80 minutes for comparison with a study by DeLeon and colleagues. We successfully replicated the results from the previous study with a significantly decreased lateral ventricular AUC in Alzheimer's disease compared to healthy controls. We also see that the mild cognitive impairment group has intermediate AUC values between those of healthy controls and Alzheimer's. The mild cognitive impairment group is not significantly different from the healthy or the Alzheimer's groups. We are now looking at standard uptake value ratios of the lateral ventricles from our current multiple sclerosis analysis on the left 
and our current Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment analysis on the right. We found significantly lower lateral ventricular SUVR values in the MS group compared to controls. We also see significantly lower SUVR values in Alzheimer's disease compared to controls and in Alzheimer's disease compared to mild cognitive impairment. Results from ANOVA analysis of the Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment data also revealed significant differences between groups. We performed compartmental modeling analysis to further understand where the signal in the lateral ventricles comes from, so what tissues are contributing to the signal in the lateral ventricles and how the signal clears. This analysis also allows for further understanding of the observed group differences. The final model was chosen based on its ability to reliably fit our data. The tissues that contribute to the ventricular PET signal include the blood and the surrounding brain tissues. Our model also accounts for specific binding within the lateral ventricles. The signal from the lateral ventricles, including the bound pool, are represented by a single PET measure. A separate PET measure is used for the signal in the gray matter tissue. The signal from blood is measured from the continuous blood sampling that occurred during the PET scan. The rate of clearance out of the lateral ventricles includes the total clearance to the blood surrounding gray matter and to the rest of the ventricular system because it is not possible to differentiate between these three clearance pathways. Linking this back to the anatomy of the CSF system, the signal contribution from the blood enters the lateral ventricles through the choroid plexus. The signal contribution from the gray matter enters through the ependymal cells that line the ventricular system, which allow quite free flow of solutes between tissue and CSF. The tracer is cleared from the lateral ventricles back to the surrounding tissues, including gray matter and blood, as well as to the rest of the ventricular system. Results from our complemental modeling analysis show significantly reduced rates of signal from the blood and the surrounding brain tissue to the lateral ventricles in Alzheimer's disease compared to controls. Our results also show reduced rate of clearance from the lateral ventricles to the surrounding tissues and ventricular system in Alzheimer's disease. Our results indicate that dynamic PET measures can be used to observe pathological changes in CSF dynamics. From our compartmental modeling analysis, we see that less tracer enters the lateral ventricles through the blood and through the brain tissue in Alzheimer's disease compared to controls. This analysis also showed that tracer is cleared from the lateral ventricles at a lower rate in patients compared to controls. Our results also indicate that the reduction of tracer entering and leaving the lateral ventricles in patient groups is independent of beta amyloid deposition as indicated by the PET results from the multiple sclerosis data set that is not expected to have significant beta amyloid accumulation. Altogether, these results indicate that CSF-mediated clearance is reduced in Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis compared to healthy controls. It is not yet clear whether our findings are specific to Alzheimer's and multiple sclerosis, and future work will be done to investigate CSF dynamics and other neurological diseases. Additional analysis will also be performed to look at correlations between PET and CSF amyloid measures. We have shown, using a broad measure of extracellular clearance, that dynamic PET can be used to measure changes in CSF dynamics. Given the close link between CSF flow and the lymphatic system, future work will focus on validating whether these PET measures can be used as biomarkers of lymphatic function. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please contact me at the email address shown here.